This is my pre-calculus course. Today we're going to solve nonlinear inequalities with rational expressions. If you haven't done the homework completely and correctly from the last class, do that homework before watching this video. In the previous class, we started by moving all the terms to one side of the inequality. We're going to do that today, but we're going to use this second step. We're going to add all the, the uh, expressions together and combine them to one fraction. And we're going to find the x values that make the expression 0 as we did in the previous class, but we're also going to find the x values that make the expression undefined because we're going to be dealing with fractions. And in order to demonstrate why that is, we'll graph a rational expression. And we have an x value, negative 1, that makes the expression 0. And the reason it makes the expression 0 is because it makes the numerator 0. When you plug in negative 1, the numerator of the fraction is 0, which means that the fraction is 0. Remember, if we plug in negative 1, then we get 0 over negative 4. So when you have 0 in the numerator of a fraction and a number other than 0, in the denominator, the value of the fraction is always 0. It's like if you cut a candy bar into four parts and then you eat all the parts so there's none left, well that means uh, we have 0 parts. Um, so that represents an x-intercept when you graph the function now be aware that if we have 0 in the numerator and 0 in the denominator, that's something completely different. That, that means you have, well, on the graph it would be a whole, but when it comes to the expression, it would, it would mean that it's basically a, a meaningless expression. You don't typically see um, holes with these types of problems. You don't see 0 over 0, so you don't really have to worry about that for these problems. Now let's try plugging in 3 to the expression. If you plug in 3, you get 4 over 0. Now 0 is in the denominator. Um, on the graph, we have an asymptote, a vertical asymptote in that situation. 4 over 0 is undefined. And so uh, be aware of that. Now I want you to notice to the left of this x-intercept, the graph is above the x-axis. The y-values are positive, so this expression would be positive. To the right of the x-intercept, the, uh, the, the curve is below the x-axis, so the y-values are negative. This expression is negative. So the x-intercept, as we found in the previous class, is a way to help us create intervals. But notice that this asymptote is also a potential place where the sign of the y values can change. Over here, the y values are all positive, but to the left of the asymptote, the y values are, are negative. So that's why in the third step, when we're dealing with an inequality with rational expressions, we're going to have to consider the x values that make the expression 0 but also the x values that make the expression undefined. That's where we can potentially have a change in sign. So um, go ahead and take a picture of all this with your phone. You're going to need this information in front of you as we work along today. And so we're going to follow the steps. Step number one just like we did in the previous class, is to move everything to the left side of the inequality, or one side of the inequality. It doesn't really have to be one side, but in this case we want the leading term to be positive, the term with the highest uh, power is going to be uh, the leading term. So we're going to start by putting everything on one side of the inequality. So what I did is I added this term to both sides of the inequality. It canceled this out and it put it over, over here. So notice that we have a common denominator. 
So that means that we can add all these fractions. This is step two. We're going to combine everything into one fraction. You always combine everything into one fraction. And you might wonder, why are we doing this? Well, we put everything on one side of the inequality because now we're just asking the question, when is this expression positive or negative? Because that tells us when it's going to be greater than 0 or equal to 0. And the reason that we combine into one fraction is that tells us what values are going to make this expression uh, 0 and, or what values are going to make it undefined because this expression is just another way to write this expression and these inequalities are just other ways of writing this inequality so we're simplifying the problem by converting to this form I know this seems very complicated but the process is really not complicated at all so we did step one put everything on the on one side of the inequality step two combine everything to one fraction now on to step four we find the values that will make the expression equal to zero or the values that will make it undefined and to do that we have to factor out a GCF and uh, now we have to factor a quadratic expression so whatever makes the numerator 0 and the problems that we're going to do today again we're not going to deal with holes we're not going to deal with um, we're not going to deal with a situation where we have 0 divided by 0 that would represent a hole in the graph if we were to graph this expression but you're, you don't really see those in these types of problems typically uh, it is possible but we're not going to see that with these problems so um, we need to we need to find the values that will make the numerator zero and we need to find the values that will make the denominator zero because those will be the potential places where the uh, the expression can change sign we want to know what x values will make this expression zero or greater than zero so we want to know where this expression is zero or positive so obviously we can plug in uh, 0 because that tells us that 0 is going to make the numerator 0. We can also plug in negative 2. That will make the numerator 0. And if we plug in 1, then we'll make the uh, expression undefined. So that tells us how to divide this up with our intervals. And by the way, we can actually combine those yellow factors into one expression uh, or one factor. Um, so that'll help us to analyze some of this stuff. Okay, so let's do our sign chart. All right, so let's plug in 2 into this expression. Again, these, these numbers are the only places where the graph can really change sign. So if we find that uh, this, uh, a test point here, after plugging it in this expression becomes positive then we know that all values that are bigger than one will make this expression positive if we plug in uh, a test point here and get some sign we know that all the values in this interval plugged in will give us that same sign because again these are the only numbers where the graph could possibly change sign so let's plug in two we don't care about the actual value when we plug in 2. We only care about the sign. So 2 squared is a positive number. And then we're going to plug in 2 here. That'll give us another positive number. 
and then 2 minus 1 in the bottom is positive, so that's a positive divided by a positive is a positive. You don't have to write all that. Um, I'm just doing that so we can see how we're calculating these things. So now let's plug in 1 half. And by the way, again, what this means is that any value that you plug in that's greater than 1, if you plug in to this expression, it'll make this positive. So that means that all these numbers are a solution to this inequality. So let's plug in 1 half. Again, you don't have to actually calculate the value. You're just looking uh, to see if it's uh, if this expression is going to be positive or negative. So 1 half squared is positive times 1 half plus 2 squared, that's positive, divided by 1 half minus 1, which is actually negative. Positive times a positive is a positive, and positive divided by negative is a negative. So there's a negative. Now, we can actually use multiplicity in some cases so that we don't have to check the sign. But if we do that, it gets a little complicated sometimes for students. So it's probably best just to use test points. Let's plug in negative 1. Plug in, we're going to get a positive times a positive. Because when you square it, it's going to be a positive no matter what. And then divide it by a negative. So plugging in negative 1, we get uh, another negative number. That's because the multiplicity is 2. It's an even multiplicity, so it's not going to change sign. And this here is an even multiplicity, so it's not going to change sign there either. OK, so we have a uh, sign chart. So let's uh, write the graphical solution. So we want to know where uh, or what x values make the expression equal to 0. So we're going to write closed dots for negative 2 and 0. Now, when we write this solution, we have to write an open dot for 1. And the reason for that is when you plug in 1, you get neither a positive number nor a negative number nor 0. You get nothing. So 1 does not count as anything. It doesn't count as a solution. It doesn't count as anything. You plug it in, you get an undefined expression. So we're looking for the x values that would make this expression greater than or equal to 0, right? If you plug in 1, you don't get anything that's less than, greater than, or anything. It's just it's undefined. So that cannot be a solution. So we have to write an open dot for that. So. Um, we want to know where this expression is greater than or equal to 0, so that's where it's positive. So that'll be that region over there. But it'll be equal to 0 when we plug in 0, and it'll be equal to 0 when we plug in negative 2. So that's the solution in graphical form. I know that's kind of weird, um, but uh, that's the solution. So. In interval notation, we'd write negative 2 to negative 2 with brackets, even though that's not really an interval. That's how we'd write it in interval notation. And then we write per a parenthesis, 1, comma, infinity. Notice we write a parenthesis because um, we have an open dot there. Okay, so there you go. That's the principle. Um, let's try another one of these problems. So the process is very similar to what we did in the, uh, the previous class. Okay, so first step is to put everything on one side of the inequality. So I'm going to put everything on the right side of the inequality. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on if you're going to have to factor something. You want the leading term to be positive if you, if you can make it positive. 
it doesn't have to be you can still factor but it just makes it a little more difficult so I'm going to subtract this expression from both sides of the inequality so that now becomes a negative term so that is step one of solving an inequality with rational expressions now we're going to combine everything to one fraction now this is where you have to really be careful these are both positive terms but because we're subtracting the fraction they're both going to become negative this is a positive term but it's going to become negative because you're subtracting it and this is a negative term but it's going to become positive because you're again subtracting the fraction so we have 5x minus 3x is 2x and then 2x minus 3x is negative x again it's almost a guarantee that students are going to have problems with that 1 minus 1 is 0 and then over here we we are subtracting negative 6 so that would be positive 6 so 0 minus negative 6 is positive 6 okay so that was step number two we combined everything to uh, to one fraction so now we're on to step three we're gonna find the x values that make the expression zero or undefined okay so now we're going to factor the difference of two squares and uh, I think we're ready now to make a sign chart so if we plug in 6 we make the numerator 0 again we have to find all the x values that make the expression 0 or undefined we have positive 5 halves and we have negative 5 halves so the 0 came from or the 6 came from there the 0 came from there and the negative 5 halves came from there and the positive 5 halves came from there you don't have to use these colors this is just for educational purposes so now we're going to plug in 7 and see if that's going to make the expression positive or negative. So if we plug in 7, we get a negative divided by a positive times a positive times a positive. So that's going to be a negative divided by a positive, which is a negative. If we plug in, let's try 4. If we plug in 4, we get a positive divided by a positive times a positive times a positive so that's a positive divided by a positive is a positive now uh, the multiplicity is again something that we could use to help us but just to make this simple for students we're just gonna test numbers and we'll rely on that alone so let's plug in positive one we'll get a positive divided by a positive times a positive times a negative which is a positive divided by a negative which is a negative and uh, we're going to plug in negative 1 so be aware that's going to be negative negative 1 so that becomes positive 1 plus 6 so that's obviously going to be a positive number divided by a negative times a positive times a negative and so that's going to end up being a positive number let's plug in uh, positive we can plug in anything over here we can plug in negative 100 we get positive divided by a negative times a negative uh, times a negative so negative times a negative is a positive and then positive times a negative is a negative positive divided by a negative is a negative again you can do all this in your head you don't have to write this the signs 
you can do it as fast as you want to do it. You don't have to write all the, the signs out like that. You do have to write your sign chart, but you don't have to write the signs down if you don't want to. You can do it in your head. Okay, so in this case, every single number is going to be written with an open dot. Even the 6 is going to be written with an open dot because it says 0 is less than. It doesn't say less than or equal to. So reading from right to left, this expression would be greater than 0, not, uh, not greater than or equal to. If it were greater than or equal to, then this 6 would be a closed dot. These are still going to be open dots no matter what because they make the expression undefined. But in this case, we're not going to write a filled in dot. We're going to write just an open dot because we want to know where the expression is greater than 0, not where it's equal to 0. So every single number is going to be an open dot. OK, we want to know where the expression is greater than 0. So that's where you see the positive symbols. And there you go. So let's write the uh, solution in interval notation. So we have negative 5 halves to 0, union 5 halves to 6, and there you go. So we have to be very, very careful that we uh, we write open dots and close dots in the proper places and that we use uh, parentheses or brackets when we need to. There's a lot of details going on with uh, these problems. And I forgot to rectangle the graphical solution. So let's try one more of these before you try one on your own. So let's go over the steps. What is step number one? Put everything on one side of the inequality. Now we want the leading term, which is going to be the x squared term, to be positive. So let's put everything on the left side of the inequality. So I'm going to add this expression to both sides of the inequality. this a positive. So if I add this fraction to both sides, it cancels out this fraction, we get 0. And then we have the ex expression over here. So that is step 1, put everything on one side of the inequality. Step 2, combine everything to one fraction. So we get 3x squared plus 13x plus 14 over x squared minus 49. And uh, so now we're going to factor. We have a quadratic in the numerator, and we have the difference of two squares in the denominator. So again, step one, put everything on one side. Step two, combine everything to one fraction. Step three, find the x values that make the expression zero or undefined. OK, so now we can write a sign chart. So we have 7 and negative 7. And we have uh, negative 2. And we have another number that's right next to it. So I'll write that in uh, a different color. That's going to be 
negative uh, 7 thirds. Okay, so now we just need to um, now we just need to determine our sign chart. So let's plug in 8. We're going to get a positive times a positive divided by a positive times a positive. So positive times a positive is a positive. Positive times a positive is a positive. Positive divided by a positive is a positive, so on and so forth. So we're going to get a positive number there. Let's plug in 0 to test this region. And we get a positive times a positive divided by a positive times a negative, which is a positive divided by a negative, which is equal to a negative. Again, you don't have to show all that. You can do it in your head. It's a lot faster to do it in your head. So let's try plugging in negative 2.1 because negative 7 over 3 is negative 2 and 1 third, which is negative 2.3 bars. So we can try negative 2.1. And if you plug that in, we get negative uh, 6.3 plus 7, which is a positive. Plug it in here, we get a negative. And plug it in uh, in the denominator, negative 2.1, we get a positive times a negative. So we have a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive. Okay, now we can plug in, say, negative 5 to test this region. And we get a negative times a negative divided by a positive times a negative, which is a positive divided by a negative, which is a negative. Again, we're only trying to figure out the sign, not the actual value. All right, let's try plugging in negative 10. We get a negative times a negative divided by a negative times a negative, which is a positive, divided by a positive, which is a positive. All right. Again, we could use multiplicity to help us here, but that would complicate things quite a bit. All right, so now we can write the graphical solution. And notice it says less than or equal to. So any number that makes the denominator 0 is going to be a filled in dot. So negative 2 and negative 7 thirds are going to be filled in dots. Um, but 7 is going to make the expression undefined and negative 7 is going to make it undefined. So we have to have open dots because uh, these are solutions to the inequality. They make the inequality true because you plug them in and you get 0, which is equal to 0. But if you plug in negative 7 or 7, it doesn't make the expression anything. So those can't possibly make the inequality true because they just make it undefined. They make the expression undefined. Okay, so we want to know where the expression is less than 0. So that's where we have negative symbols. So this region and this region. Okay, so that is the graphical solution. And now we're going to write in interval notation. And there you go. So that is the process. So I'm going to give you one more chance. And by the way, what this means is if you plug in negative 2 or anything between negative 2 and 7 into this inequality, the inequality will be true. If you plug in negative 7 thirds or anything between negative 7 thirds and negative 7 into this inequality, into x, or make x that any, any of those numbers, this inequality will be true. But if you put 7 or anything bigger, or negative 7 or anything smaller, or any number between negative 7 thirds and negative 2 into this inequality, the inequality will not be true. That's all that means. So I'm going to give you one more chance to take a picture of this information with your phone. I want you to take a picture of these two problems that we did. 
and use number three to help you with number four. Now you want the leading term to be positive. So combine these terms first and then put everything on the left side of the inequality. That's step number one. Then combine everything into one fraction. That's step number two. So try number four. When you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So again, I'm going to combine these these fractions at the right. And uh, then I'm going to subtract this fraction and put everything on one side of the inequality. Um, so then we're going to combine the fractions. This is step one, put everything on one side of the inequality. I'm going to combine the fractions. So now on to step three, we're going to factor out 4x squared. And we're going to factor the difference of two squares. And now we can write a sign chart. Now it says we want the expression to be greater than 0, so there's not going to be any closed dots. They're all going to be open dots. We have 10 and actually we don't need to write any dots at all. We can just do the sign chart first. There we go. So let's do the sign chart. Let's plug in 11. We get a positive times a positive times a positive divided by a positive is a positive. And if we plug in 5, we get uh, a positive times a positive times a negative divided by a positive. So that's going to end up being negative. Then we're going to plug in negative 1, we get a positive times a positive times a negative divided by a positive. So that's going to be negative. And that's because we have an even multiplicity on that 0. 2 is an even number. Now we're going to plug in negative 8. And we uh, get a positive times a positive times a negative divided by a negative, which is going to end up being positive. And plugging in negative 12, we get positive times a negative times a negative divided by a negative, which is going to be a negative. So now we have to worry about open dots and closed dots. Again, there's not going to be any closed dots. So negative 5 is an open dot because the expression is not even defined there. So, x, so negative 5 is not going to make the inequality true. It's just going to make nonsense. Now 10, 0, and negative 10 are going to make the expression equal to 0 because the numerator is going to be equal to 0. But that doesn't make the inequality true because this expression has to be greater than 0, not, not equal to 0. So that's why we have open dots for every one of these numbers. So we want to know where it's greater than 0. So that's going to be here and here. So that is the graphical solution. And now let's write the uh, solution in interval notation. Um, There you go. So it looks like we don't even really need that that zero. 
can see this green here. That's not really it's not really part of the solution. It has nothing to do with the solution. So we can just get rid of that. Okay. So um, that's the solution in inequality notation. If you got that right, good job. If you wrote the zero here, that's okay. It's not wrong. It's just you don't really need it. All right, so I want you to take a picture uh, of these two problems here. And then I want you to do number five. So I'm going to put everything on the right side of the inequality. You could put everything on the left side. But if you want to do it the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to put everything on the right side. So put everything on the right side of the inequality. That's step number one. Then combine everything to one fraction. That's step number two. And then proceed from there. So try number five. When you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So again, I'm going to put everything on the right side of the inequality. So we're going to have uh, 0 on the left side. And in order to put the fraction on the right side of the inequality, I'm going to subtract this expression from both sides. So that makes that a negative term. OK, so that was step number one. So now we're going to combine everything into one fraction. 3x minus x is 2x, and then 2x minus x is x. 5 minus 9 is negative 4. Again, a lot of students are going to have trouble with the signs because these are both positive numbers, but when you subtract, they become negative numbers. That's a positive number, but when you subtract, it becomes a negative number. So if you don't recognize that, then you're going to have a lot of trouble with these problems. OK. So uh, that was step two. We combined everything to one fraction. So now let's go to step three. So we're going to factor out negative x, and we have x squared minus x minus 2. OK. So continuing to factor there, we factor the GCF. This green negative x is the GCF, and then we factor the orange quadratic. And now we're ready to make a sign chart. So we have uh, 0 and 4 and 2 and negative 1. And let's check the, uh, the regions. And I'm going to move this over, might as well. I'm going to plug in 5, and we get a positive divided by a negative times a positive times a positive, And that would result in a negative number. If we plug in 3, we get a negative divided by a negative times a positive times a positive, which would end up being positive. If we plug in 1, then we get a negative divided by a negative times a negative times a positive, which will give us a negative number. If we plug in negative 1 half, we would get a negative divided by a positive times a negative times a positive, 
which would be positive. If we plug in negative 2, we get a negative divided by a positive times uh, a negative times a negative, which would give us a negative number. Okay, so now let's write the graphical solution. So in this case, the expression can be equal to zero. So for four, we're going to write a closed dot. But for every other number, we're going to write an open dot. Because these green numbers here make the expression undefined. And so they're, they're not going to make the inequality true, they're just going to make the inequality nonsense. So those are not numbers that can be uh, solutions. Now we want to know where the expression is greater than zero. So that's going to be where we see these plus signs. And there you go, that is the graphical solution of the inequality. So let's write the uh, solution in uh, interval notation. And notice we have a bracket on 4. So there you go. If you got that one right, excellent. OK, go ahead and try number 6. And when you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So I'm going to put everything on the left side of the inequality. And I guess I'll copy and paste. So we're going to subtract this term from both sides. And then we're going to combine everything because we have a common denominator. And then we have a quadratic in the numerator. And the difference of two squares in the denominator. So now we're ready to go on to step three. We're going to make a sign chart. We have 1, 1 half, and uh, negative 4 thirds would be to the left, and positive 4 thirds would be uh, somewhere over here. Again, the spacing is really not that important. We just want to know what the sign of the intervals is or each interval. So let's try plugging in uh, 2 to test this region. We have a positive times a positive divided by a positive times a positive. So that region is positive. Let's try plugging in 1.1 and we're going to get a uh, positive times a positive divided by a positive times a negative. So that's going to end up being negative. And let's plug in uh, 3 fourths. If we plug in 3 fourths, we get a positive times a negative divided by a positive um, times a negative. So that's going to end up giving us a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive. And let's try plugging in 0. And we get a negative times a negative divided by a positive times a negative. So that's a positive divided by a negative, which is a negative. 
let's try plugging in negative 2. Then we get a negative times a negative divided by a negative times a negative, which is a positive divided by a positive. <clears throat> okay, so notice it says the expression is less than zero, so that means there's not going to be any uh, closed dots. We're going to have open dots on all of these uh, all of these points on the, the number line. <clears throat> because these green numbers produce an undefined expression, so it doesn't make the inequality true, it just makes it uh, nonsensical, undefined. And if you plug in one or one half, these yellow numbers, then it makes the expression zero, but we don't want to make the expression zero, we want to make the expression less than zero. <clears throat> so that's going to be this region here, and this region here, and so that is the graphical solution. <clears throat> so in interval notation, we have negative four thirds to one half. Union, one to four thirds. So if you got that right, excellent. Okay, you can take a picture of these problems if you want and I want you to try uh, actually the next problem let's do together um, <clears throat> so notice that we don't have to move everything to one side of the inequality because um, everything's already on one side and we don't have to combine everything to one fraction because it's already one fraction so we can just move on to step number three and factor so this is a particular expression that we're used to factoring it looks like a quadratic but it's not really a quadratic and in the denominator we're going to factor out x squared in the first two terms and we're going to factor out 2 in the third and fourth terms. Then you see in the denominator we have a common factor, x minus 5. So we're going to factor that. So we'll pull out x minus 5 from this term and this term. And we're left with x squared plus 2. Now in the denominator we have the sum of two squares and there's no x value that you can plug in uh, to this expression that will give you a zero uh, that is no real number you can plug in imaginary numbers but those don't exist on the real number line but over here this is the difference of two squares it doesn't look like the difference of two squares but if you write it as x squared minus square root 3 squared that's the difference of two squares <clears throat> so you can factor that um, so the same is true here We'd, we'd need imaginary numbers for the yellow and blue factors to make them zero, so we don't have to worry about the sum of two, two uh, squares. We're ready to do our number line, and I can't forget to write my uh, remaining part of the inequality there. So we have uh, five and... Um, we have <clears throat> root 3, which we'll put about there, and negative root 3. Again, the spacing doesn't have to be perfect. 
Okay, so let's try plugging in uh, 6. We get a positive times a positive times a positive divided by a positive times a positive. So that's obviously going to be a region where the y values are positive if you graph this expression. Let's plug in uh, 3. Then we get a positive times a positive times a positive divided by a negative times a positive. So that's going to result in a negative. And let's try plugging in 0. And we get a positive times a negative times a positive divided by a negative times a positive. So that ends up being a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive. Let's plug in uh, negative 3. So then we get a negative times a negative times a positive divided by a negative times a positive, which is a positive divided by a negative, which is a negative. So again, there are some faster ways to do that, but it complicates things if we want to get into that, and it's better just to test the regions. Okay, so um, again, we have a less than symbol so that means that all of these numbers are going to have open dots. And we want to know where the expression is less than zero. So that is in the regions where the expression is negative. Whoops. Not that region. This region here. OK, so let's write the interval notation. That's it. So again, um, if you plug in um, these green numbers, the expression is 0, but we don't want it to be 0. We want it to be less than 0. So that's why I have open dots for these green numbers. The reason we have an open dot for 5 is because we want the expression to be less than 0, but if you plug in 5, it's neither less than 0, nor greater than 0, nor equal to 0. It's just undefined. So this number doesn't count. It doesn't make the inequality true. It just makes it nonsensical. OK. So we had to factor a special green expression there, and we had to uh, factor by grouping in purple. So you're going to have that type of problem for number 8. Try number 8. When you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So I'm going to factor out an x squared in the first two terms and a negative 1 in the third and fourth term. And notice we now have a common factor. That's why we, we know we can factor by grouping in this particular problem. And we have something resembling a quadratic. We're used to seeing that expression. Now we're going to factor out x plus 1 from this term and this term. And we have the difference of two squares here. So we can factor to x plus 2 times x minus 2, just to be clear. That's coming from there. And then we have x squared plus 2, which is the sum. You could call that the sum of two squares, even though 2 is not a perfect square. Um, now we also have the difference of two squares here. So we can factor that. So there's a lot of stuff to, to factor. So that came from there. OK, let's look over this and make sure we did everything correctly. Because if you made a mistake, then we're going to do a lot of work for nothing. So you always want to go back and make sure you wrote everything correctly. So now, to make things easier, I'm going to combine the x plus 1s. And that's going to allow us to see the multiplicity of that, of that 0. It's going to give us some useful information about whether or not the sign changes 
at that uh, at that x value. Okay, so um, now we're ready to do a sign chart, and whatever numbers make uh, this expression zero are going to have closed dots because it says greater than or equal to. So we have two, we have negative two, um, we have uh, one and negative one, and that's it. This expression here again is the sum of two squares. It's not going to lead us to any any number that would be helpful. Um, Okay, so now let's do a sign chart. Let's plug in 3. We have a positive times a positive divided by a positive times a positive times a positive, which would obviously result in a positive number. Let's try plugging in 1.5. So we get a positive times a positive divided by a positive times a negative times a positive, which would produce a negative number. Let's try plugging in 0. We get a positive times a negative divided by a positive times a negative times a positive, which would give us a positive number. And we have, uh, we're going to plug in negative 1.5. Now be aware that when you add negative 1.5 and 1, you get a negative number, but when you square it, it becomes positive. So be aware of uh, that multiplicity there. We have even multiplicity on that zero. And plugging in negative 1.5, we get a positive times a negative times a positive, and that will produce a, uh, a positive number. So notice because we had an even multiplicity with this zero, the sign actually didn't change there. It stayed positive. Now let's plug in negative 3. We get a positive because you square and it becomes positive, then negative, then negative times a negative times a positive. And that ends up being a negative time or negative divided by a positive, which is a negative. So now we're going to write the graphical solution. And uh, 1 and negative 1 are uh, values that will make the expression 0. And because it says greater than or equal to, we're going to draw closed dots. But for the other numbers, we're going to draw open dots because those numbers make the expression undefined. So we want to know where this expression is greater than 0. And obviously, that's going to be, um, that's going to be this region here and also this region over here. Now be aware that we actually don't need to write this yellow negative 1. We can actually just erase that. It's not really necessary to even put there. OK, so now let's write the uh, solution in interval notation. So be careful that you use the right notation. We want parentheses in some places and brackets in other places. OK, so there you go. Have you got that one right? Excellent. All right, so now we're going to do problems that require uh, factoring the difference of two cubes or using the rational zeros theorem. And the reason for that is we have uh, the sum of two cubes. That's this formula here. I think I said difference of two cubes, but we can do the sum or difference. Now we cannot factor the sum of two squares unless we want to use imaginary numbers. But we can factor the sum of two cubes. We can do that. Notice everything is already on one side of the inequality, so that's good. And everything is already combined into one fraction. 
All right, so I'm going to write this as the sum of two cubes, so we see that we can use the formulas. Now we could use the rational zeros theorem, but that's not really practical because the zero we're looking for is going to be a fraction, and so it's difficult to, to find it in the list of possible rational zeros. And it's difficult to plug it in to uh, verify that it, that, it, that it works. So we're going to use the formula. That's where the formula comes in handy. And a is uh, 3x. So we have 3x um, plus b. We're using this uh, yellow formula up there. So 3x plus b, b is 4, and then we have a squared minus a times b, b is 4, plus b squared. And we need a parenthesis at the end. So we factored the sum of two cubes. And let's just simplify here. So we have 3x plus 4 um, times 9x squared minus 12x plus 16 is less than or equal to 0. So at this point, we need to know what to do with this factor here, because there may be additional numbers to consider. If there's an x value that you can plug in, to this blue expression to make it zero, then we need to consider that in our intervals. But we don't know if that can be factored, so we have to find the discriminant. So that is negative 12 squared minus four times a times c. So that is all coming from there. So 12 squared is 144. Negative 12 squared is 144. And those other numbers become uh, 576. And we subtract, and we get a negative number, obviously. So because it's negative, that means that it cannot be uh, factored. Or there's no there's no real number you can plug in. It it can be factored. Any any expression like this can be factored, but it cannot be factored easily and uh, even if we could factor it we would we'd find that there's no real numbers that you can plug in they would have to be imaginary so what that means is we can just leave that we don't we don't need to factor it so let's write a sign chart so we have eight and we have um, a negative one and um, negative uh, four thirds which is really close I'll exaggerate the distance, but let's plug in 9, and then we get obviously um, obviously a positive number. And let's plug in 0, and we get a negative times a positive, divided by a positive times a positive, which would give us a negative number. And let's plug in negative 1.1. .1. We get a negative times uh, a negative divided by a positive times um, that's going to be a positive regardless because you square it it becomes positive and then you multiply a negative by a, a negative that becomes positive so this region will be positive plug in negative 2 and we get a negative times a negative divided by a negative times what has to be a positive. So then we get positive divided by a negative, which is a negative. So now we're ready to write the graphical solution. And let me find a little more room here. Okay, so notice it says less than or equal to. So 
anything that makes the uh, fraction 0 is going to be a filled in dot. Anything that makes the fraction undefined is always an open dot. And so, sorry, my computer's going a little, a little slow. So we want to know where the expression is less than 0. And that's where uh, we have the negative symbol. So this region here and these numbers there. So that is the graphical solution. And now let's write the solution in interval notation. And there you go. So again, we had to um, we had to factor the sum of two cubes, as you see up there. And uh, now I want you to try number ten. Now be aware that you don't have to use these formulas you can use the rational zeros theorem because the truth is nobody ever remembers these formulas. Uh, in this case the rational zeros theorem is going to be fairly easy to use. But if you do use the rational zeros theorem you would have to switch the terms around and when you divide you'd have to write negative 1, uh, 0, 0, 27. So just be aware of that. But again, you don't have to use the rational zeros theorem. You can just use these formulas because you have them right in front of your, your uh, right in front of you. Okay, so try number ten. When you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So I'm going to change that to uh, the difference of two cubes, and I'm going to factor the denominator. So we have two x plus five and two x minus five. And I'm going to use this formula here. So that factors to a minus b, a minus b times a squared minus a times b plus b squared. Um, And now let's uh, simplify that. So we get uh, 9 minus 3x plus x squared all over 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 5. Now this is kind of in a weird order so to make things easier for us you really should flip that around a lot of students can say no I can just leave it there don't leave it there change it trust me it's gonna cause problems if we don't put it in a recognizable form because we're going to whoops I forgot to write my inequality symbol we're going to uh, use a discriminant to make sure that we can't uh, find a, an x value that will make that 0. So b squared minus 4ac we have b squared minus 4 times a times c which is 9 minus 36 which is negative uh, 27 and obviously uh, because our discriminant is negative that means there's no real number you can plug in there to uh, to get a zero so we don't have to worry about that factor so now we can write a sign chart 3 is a number of interest and negative 5 halves is a number of interest and positive 5 halves. Okay, let's plug in a 4. Then we get a negative times 
uh, 16 minus 12, that's a positive, so that's going to be a positive. Um, divided by a positive times a positive, so it looks like we're going to get a negative. Now let's plug in uh, 2.7. We get a positive, and that's going to be uh, a little weird to calculate, so you can use your calculator, that's fine. 2.7 times 2.7 is 7.29 minus 3 times 2.7 which is 8.1 so that's going to give you a negative number but then when you add it to 9 it'll be positive so that'll be a positive number divided by um, 2.7 times 2 is bigger than 5 well it doesn't really matter that's going to be positive yeah, it's bigger than 5, so that's going to be a positive. And uh, there we go. So, yes, I'm doing a lot of this in my head, but you can do that too, or else this, this problem is going to take a long time. But uh, you can take your time. You don't, you don't have to rush through this. So let's plug in 0. We have a positive times a positive divided by a positive times a negative. So that's going to result in a negative. And then we can plug in negative 3. And we get a positive because that's a double negative. And that's definitely going to give us a positive. And divided by a negative times a negative. And that would result in a positive. So we want to know where the expression is less than or equal to 0. Um, so. 3 makes the expression 0, so we're going to have a closed dot, because that works in the inequality. If we plug in 5 halves, that's not going to work in the, in, the, in the inequality, because it just makes it the expression undefined. So it's not going to be less than 0, it's just going to be undefined. And now, uh, let's, uh, let's mark where the expression is negative. So that's going to be here and here. So that is the graphical solution. Let's write this solution in interval notation. So we have negative 5 halves, comma, 5 halves, union, bracket, 3, comma, infinity. There you go. Um, so if you got that one right, excellent. Again, I know it's annoying having to remember these formulas, but those may rear their ugly heads at some point in your math curriculum. So if you want my advice, it's probably best just to memorize those. Okay, so now we're going to some slightly different problems here. Because in these problems, uh, we're going to have to combine the terms when they don't necessarily have a common denominator. We have to combine everything into one fraction. That's going to be a little bit more challenging with these problems. So uh, despite that, we're going to follow the same steps. So what was step number one? Step number one is to get everything on one side of the inequality. So step number one is the same. And step number two is also the same. The problem is uh, we're going to have to do some work to put these numbers together into one fraction. And the reason we combine to one fraction is because, again, it just makes it easier for us to see where the zeros are or the numbers that make the expression undefined. So we're going to write 3 over 1, and I guess I'll just do another step just to make things clear. You don't have to show all this work, but now I'm going to multiply both sides of this fraction by x minus 4. And you might be wondering why I'm going to do that. Well, because now we're going to have... Um, 
a common denominator. That's the whole point. Now we can combine the expressions. So we have a common denominator, and be aware that uh, these signs are going to change. That's not going to be positive 3x. It's going to be negative 3x, because you're subtracting the fraction. So we're going to be left with negative 2x. And then we're not adding, or we're not subtracting 12, we're adding 12. So that's going to be uh, 14. So that problem was quite a bit different than the problems we did previously because we had to do a lot of math there, a lot of algebra, in order to uh, combine everything to one fraction. So step number one, put everything on one side of the inequality. Step number two, combine everything to one fraction. So uh, it might be beneficial to factor out a negative 2. It just makes it easier for us to see where the 0 is. You don't have to do that. but So now we're ready to make a sign chart and do everything we did in the previous problems. So we've got, uh, it says less than or equal to, so we can well, well, we'll worry about that later. But we've got these two numbers, and plugging in 8, we get um, negative 2 times 1 divided by uh, 4, so that's obviously a negative number. Um, then let's plug in 5, and we get negative 2 times negative 2 over uh, 1. So that's going to be a positive number. Plug in 0. That's an easy number to use. And we'll get negative uh, 2 times negative 7 divided by negative 4. And that would be 14 over negative 4. So that's going to be a negative number. So now, when we write the solution in graphical form, we have to be careful. Uh, 7 is going to be a closed dot because it says less than or equal to and 4 of course that's going to be an open dot because it makes the expression undefined okay so we want to know where it's less than 0 so that's going to be here and here and that is the graphical solution um, let's find a little bit more space And we'll write the uh, solution in interval notation. And remember, never write a bracket next to an infinity symbol. OK, so let's try another one of those. So step number one, we're going to get everything on the same side of the inequality and then we're going to combine everything into one fraction and you don't have to show this but I'm just demonstrating that you can convert those to fractions and we're going to multiply both sides of this fraction by X sorry my computer's going kind of slow So multiplying both sides of that by x, and I'll multiply both sides of this fraction by x. And so we have uh, 2x over x plus x squared over x plus 3 over x. And you see now we have a common denominator. So we can combine all these fractions, and I'm going to write in descending order of powers. And to help us find the zeros, I'm going to factor that quadratic. Um, actually, that should be a negative. Sorry about that. Um, 
So we have positive 3 and uh, negative 1. Um, okay, over x. And so now we can write a sign chart. So we have 0, and we have 1, and we have negative 3. Maybe we'll move that over a little bit. So let's test 2. That's going to be positive. Um, and we'll test uh, 1 half. That's going to be negative. And we'll test a negative 1. That's going to be positive. And negative 4. That's going to be uh, negative times a negative is a positive divided by negative is a negative. Again, you can use multiplicity to help you with that, but it kind of complicates things. These problems are not exactly simple problems. So if you throw multiplicity into the bunch, that's going to make things more complicated. So it's better just to test the regions. So notice it says we want the expression to be greater than 0, but not equal to 0. So that means every single one of these numbers is going to be an open dot. 0 is going to be open because it makes the expression undefined. It certainly doesn't make it greater than 0. It just makes it undefined. Negative 3 and 1 make the expression 0, but we don't want it to be 0. We want it to be greater than 0. So we mark the intervals where we have plus symbols because we want the expression to be greater than zero and uh, that is the graphical solution in interval notation we have the following so there you go there was another example of uh, one of these types of problems where we have to find a common denominator Okay, so let's try one more of these before you try one on your own. Again, we have the same steps that we followed in, in all the other problems. We're going to start by putting everything on one side of the inequality. And then we need to combine everything, but notice that we don't have a common denominator. So I'm going to have to multiply both sides of this fraction by x plus 5. And you might wonder, well, how do you know to multiply by x plus 5? Well, you're going to see that when we do that, and when we multiply this other fraction by 2x plus 3 over 2x plus 3, it's going to give us a common denominator. That's, that's the only reason we're doing it. So at this point, let's go back over everything, make sure that we wrote everything correctly, because there's a lot of room for error with these problems. So now I'm going to use FOIL here. So we get x squared plus 4x minus 5 over 2x plus 3 times x plus 5 minus 2x plus 3 over uh, now you could FOIL the denominators out, but that would actually be uh, counterproductive because eventually you want those to be factored anyway. But with these, you're definitely going to have to factor the or uh, FOIL these. Okay, so let's again double check everything, make sure we did everything correctly because if we don't, that's a lot of work that we're going to have to fix. So now we have a common denominator. Again, if you're wondering why we did that, well, you see the denominators are now the same. All we did was just multiply both sides of this fraction by this yellow denominator, and we multiply both sides of this fraction by this purple denominator. And that actually always works for every fraction. It won't necessarily produce the... Uh, uh, a fraction in simplified form, but it'll 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 produce what you need to combine the fractions. Okay, so we have a common denominator, so we're gonna combine the fractions, and 
be aware that the signs change here because you're subtracting and then we're going to factor the numerator um, okay so we have a uh, negative 4 and uh, 2 and we also have negative 5 I'm going to space this differently so negative 5 we'll put there negative 4 right next to it and then we have uh, 2 somewhere over here and negative 3 halves would be somewhere around there again the spacing doesn't have to be perfect. So let's plug in 3. If we plug in 3, we're going to get a positive. Plug in uh, 0, and we get a negative. And plug in um, negative uh, 2, or maybe negative 3, and we'll get a positive times a negative. divided by a negative times a positive which will give us a positive I'll plug in negative 4.5 which will give us a negative times a negative divided by a negative times a positive which is a positive divided by a negative which is a negative and then plug in negative 6 and we get a negative times a negative divided by a negative times a negative which is a positive so the graphical solution uh, we need open dots for everything because it says greater than or equal to or excuse me it says just greater than not equal to up here so we want to know where the expression is greater than zero so that's the plus symbols those regions there and so that is the graphical solution and now uh, the solution in interval notation and so there you go. All right, so I want you to get a picture of these three problems that we did. I guess you can just leave the uh, leave your uh, screen up there and try number 14. Number 14 is going to be very similar to number 11. So try 14. When you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So we're going to Uh, combine everything or put everything on one side now if you put the fraction on the left side that's okay but uh, you should get the same answer okay so I'm gonna write 1 as 1 over 1 I'm taking it slow here and then I'm gonna multiply both sides of that fraction by x plus 1. And why am I going to do that? Well, because now we're going to have a common denominator. So we have x plus 5 over x plus 1 plus x plus 1 over x plus 1. Now, could you have gone straight from here to there? Yes, and I recommend that you do that. This is only for your benefit. I, w I really wouldn't uh, go to the trouble of doing all that yourself if you understand the concept. x plus x is 2x, 5 plus 1 is 6. We have a common denominator so we can add everything together. I'm going to factor out 2 just to make things a little easier for us to see. And now we can do a sign chart. So we have negative uh, 3 and negative 1. 
So let's try plugging in 0, and we get a positive number. Let's try plugging in negative 2, and we get a negative number. Let's try plugging in negative 4, and we get a positive number. So now we can draw the graphical solution. Notice it says we want the expression to be less than 0, so there aren't going to be any filled in dots. Negative 1 makes the expression undefined, and negative 3 makes it 0, but we're not supposed to make it 0, so that's not part of the solutions. And we just want this inner part here, which is negative, because we want the expression to be less than 0. So we're going from negative 3 to negative 1. That's the solution in interval notation. So if you got that right, excellent. So if you haven't already gotten a picture, take a picture of these problems, and I want you to use those to do number uh, 15. Number 12 will be particularly useful for you when you do number 15. So try that problem, and when you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So I'm going to put everything on one side of the inequality. Then I'm going to combine everything to one fraction. And just to be clear what we're doing here, we're writing those expressions as fractions. And then I'm going to multiply both sides of this first fraction by x using the fundamental principle of fractions. And uh, whoops, that should be an x. I'm going to multiply both sides of this fraction by x. And so we get x squared over x minus 28 over x minus 3x over x is greater than or equal to 0. And so now we have x squared minus 3x minus 28. Over x is greater than or equal to 0. All right, so now we're going to factor the quadratic. We have x minus 7 times x plus uh, 4. All over x. And so now we can do our sign chart. So we have 0, and we have uh, 7, and we have negative 4. So if we plug in 8, we get a positive number. If we plug in uh, 5, we get a negative number. If we plug in negative 2, we get a uh, positive number. If we plug in uh, negative 5, we get a negative times a negative is a positive divided by a negative, which is a negative. So let's write the graphical solution. It says that the expression should be greater than or equal to, so whatever makes the expression 0 is going to be a filled in dot. And of course, as always, whatever makes the expression undefined, that's going to be an open dot. So I want the expression to be greater than 0. So we're going to fill in this area over here and that area. So that is the graphical solution to that problem. And now let's write the uh, solution in interval notation. Um, so we have a bracket, negative 4. 0, parenthesis, union, bracket, 7, comma, infinity. So if you got that right, excellent. OK, one more problem today. So try number 16. If you haven't got a picture of these problems yet, take a picture. And number 13 is going to be particularly useful for you when you're doing the last problem here. So try number 16. When you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So we're going to put everything on one side 
of the inequality. And um, notice that we don't have a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this fraction by x minus 2, the denominator of the other fraction. And now I'm going to multiply both sides of the other fraction by the denominator of the first fraction. And why are we going to do that? Well, because it gives us a common denominator. That's just how you would find a common denominator. OK. So let's go back and double check everything, make sure we did everything correctly. Looks like we did, so now we're going to FOIL this. We're not going to FOIL the denominator, but we're going to FOIL that. So we have x squared minus 8x plus 12 all over x minus 3 times x minus 2. And over here we have, we're going to use the distribution property. And then we have x minus 2 times x uh, minus 3. And that's all less than or equal to 0. So now we're going to combine the fractions because we now have a common denominator. But remember, these signs change. So this is not going to be positive x squared. It's going to be negative x squared. So those x squares are going to cancel out. This is not going to be negative 3x. It's going to be positive 3x. So add that to uh, negative 8x, and we get negative 5x plus 12. And that's all over x minus 3 times x minus 2. OK, so now we can do a sign chart. So we're going to plug in 3, and then we're going to plug in 2. And we're going to have 2 and 2 fifths. So it looks like we need to space this out a little bit. 2 and 2 fifths would be about there. That's the same thing as 12 over 5. OK, so let's plug in 4. If we plug in 4, we get a negative number. Let's plug in um, 2.8. 2.8 would work. Um, so on the denominator, we're going to get a negative number times the Potter number. Um, and then in the uh, numerator, you can use your calculator if you want. So negative 5 times uh, 2.8 is negative 14. So that's going to be a negative up there. So negative divided by negative is a positive. Now let's try plugging in uh, 2.1. So 2.1 times 5 is 10.5. So that's going to be a positive in the numerator divided by um, a negative times a positive, which is going to end up being a negative. Now let's try plugging in 0. We get a positive divided by a negative times a negative, which is a positive. OK, so now <clears throat> we can write our graphical solution. And it says the expression should be less than or equal to. So anything that makes the denominator uh, 0 is going to be, well, anything that makes the denominator 0 is always going to be an, an open dot. But the number that's going to make the fraction 0, that's going to be a closed dot because it says less than or equal to. So we want to know where, where it's less than 0. That's when it's negative. So, um, Let's see. I think that's about it. So that is the graphical solution. And now let's write the solution in interval notation. So we have 2 comma 12 over 5 with a bracket union 3 comma infinity. And there we go. OK, so. If you got that one right, excellent. If you had a little trouble with those problems, that's okay. We're reviewing quite a bit 
of uh, math. So that was the class today. If you want to take screenshots of all the work that we did to help you with your homework or to study for tests, go ahead and do that now. Here's screenshot number one and number two and number three and four and five and six seven and eight but don't go before you get your homework let's take a look at the homework here's screenshot number one of the homework and screenshot number two and number three and number four be sure to check all your answers you see we have the answers at the right so get get that uh, homework done and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next class